Hello, hi, and welcome to Empathic Fire. I am your reader, Jay. There's going to be general messages for the sign of Capricorn in the month of January 2019. How's it going, Capricorn? What's going on with you? Hope you guys are doing well. Hope everything in your life is going fantastically. Happy New Year, guys. Hope you guys are having a wonderful 2019 so far. If you celebrated uh, the New Year's earlier this year, earlier this year, earlier this month, Although both are accurate. <laughs> uh, I hope it was surrounding, uh, you were surrounded by people you love and who love you back and you had a fabulous time. And also happy birthday to all you Capricorns that will be celebrating, uh, who were already celebrating earlier this year, who are celebrating right about now, and who will be celebrating your birthdays uh, closer to the end of the month. Hope you guys have a good one, okay? All right, guys, shuffled off camera. That's your main spread there. What I'll do now is I'll shuffle for your outcome and your overall energy. Once all cards are out and they're lying face up, that's when the reading begins. You will see a timestamp in the description box below if you want to jump ahead. I totally don't fault you for doing so. <laughs> uh, also down there, you're going to find steps to how to get a personal reading with me. Uh, readings are $25, non-negotiable. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, so it's pretty easy. Uh, I think it's pretty clear. I think it's pretty uh, straightforward. But if you do have any questions, you can email me at the same email address. And I will be happy to answer your questions non-tarot reading related. All right, guys. So let's go ahead and get the outcome for you for your January 2019. Let's get it. <clears throat> Whoa, almost. Hmm. There it is. Okay. Oh boy. Okay, I'll come there. And then we'll flip the remainder of the cards and let's see what's going on for you. Oh. Lots of mages. Oh my god, lots of mages. So you are having a, a dance with the universe, maybe. Uh, a lot of you Capricorns. Why do I say that and for those who may not be informed? Okay, so major arcana, there's two different types. There's minor and major. And most of these cards that you see out here on the board are majors. Majors are overseen or kind of influenced by the universe, by God, by fate, by destiny, by the divinity, whatever you want to think of in terms of the big, big. Okay, so the big, big scale is really heavily influencing this reading, at least right now. Uh, so you may feel that in your life that there's kind of this influence over things right now or themes thematic things maybe nothing specific but certainly thematically you might be feeling whatever we're going to talk about i have no idea what we're going to talk about um but yeah i felt the need to explain that to someone out there so you're welcome <laughs> all right let me see where you are please show me capricorn in january 2019 please show me capricorn in january 2019 please show me Here? Is that right? Yeah, okay, thank you. <laughs> They're like, yeah. <laughs> they kind of give me an attitude with it, too. <laughs> okay, guys, coming into January 2019, you come in as the hero. Hierophant. Hierophant. I guess you could say it either way. It's not a common word, so I don't think anybody's gonna jump down my neck for that. Anyway, the Hierophant card. Uh, card of Taurus, so you might have a Taurus of significance in your life or. Uh, Regarding your situation, I don't know why. They're giving me a lot, so the divine might be here with me today. Not like, you know, I'm... Anyway, it doesn't matter. So Hierophant, like I said, card of Taurus, talks a lot about traditions and, and prescriptive living or, or ways in which we expect uh, <clears throat> certain dynamics in our way to go. There are rules and regulations. There's uh, sort of a step-by-step -step process, and it's very... Uh, like I said, prescribed. This plus this equals that. Step one, step two, step three. That happens, and then once that happens, then this other thing happens, and it's like really by the book, right? 
also talks to institutions that we're all familiar with, government, religion, school, sometimes uh, uh, hospitals or, or uh, medical communities. Uh, can also talk about media, uh, so your good old television, newspaper, radio type things, right? And now at this point, social media, of course. Um, and it's all in this idea of everything and everyone has a place to be in. Like, everybody has a role that they must play. Everybody has uh, certain parameters in which they must operate. So you might be doing this, or it, it might be this influence is happening to you and, and uh, no matter what, I feel resistance. So either you are implementing and you are kind of taking up this mantle of, you know, everything must be by the books, let's all follow the rules here and people uh, or the, the, the circumstance overall feels, feels as if it's resisting you, pushing back against you or you're pushing back against the system. Basically, this is, you know, David versus Goliath, you know, don't let the man get you down, all that kind of stuff. Um, and being that you're starting here, I think, I think strangely, Capricorn, it's going to go 50-50. Like, literally, half of you, or very close to half of you, will be the person that's implementing this structure and wants the rules to be followed, and the other half is, like, rebelling against those rules and feeling really pissed off if I'm honest, really, really pissed off that these rules are being sent down and, and, and you're being essentially held accountable to rules that you don't agree with. So some of you love the rules, want to see the rules, uh, stay in their place and everything falls in line and everybody else falls in line. And others of you are like, to hell with all of that. These rules are bogus. I That doesn't help me or this doesn't help me. You feel like, burdened by it you feel really annoyed and like you don't know my situation or you don't know how I feel or you can't account for all of these specifics like you're giving all of these reasons a very long list and it doesn't have to be long but there is like a, an exacting you are being very exacting in how and why the rules don't apply to you and how and why you're valid in wanting to circumvent those rules or disobey those rules or totally rewrite those rules. It might not be that type of rebellion, anarchy kind of thing or chaos or just being disrespectful or disregarding. It can be, let's rewrite these rules. Why are you acting as if, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking as you Capricorn, why are you person who's embodying this energy or the circumstance that embodies this energy, why are you coming with this authority as if you can understand all of the angles involved here. This situation is too detailed, it's too complex. You can't prescribe this simple set of rules or have this simple standard and expect it to be adhered to. That's impossible. So others of you are on the flip side of that and you're just like, the rules are the rules <laughs> and we are going to follow the rules, okay? Um, and that's interesting because I normally fall... Like, I guess if you want to imagine a pie chart or something like that, I normally get like a 60-40 or like a high percentage. Like I, I speak, when I give like, <laughs> when I describe, like when I say some, I mean some. When I say most, I mean most. When I see, say many or a few, I mean that stuff. And that's because like, not all the time, but it's often like in a proportion in my mind. And so if you want to think of a pie chart, and literally for you Capricorns, and it's gonna, it might sound like a cop out, but it's true. This is like coming really close to like 50-50. Some of you are pro rules, some of you are anti rules, and that's it. So pick your side. I'll try to compensate and try and give as many angles as possible. But many of you are just like, these are the rules and we like it, which makes sense. You're an earth sign similar to Taurus. Earth signs are about stable, grounded, predictable energy. Energy that can be relied, relied upon, is responsible, follows the rules, follows uh, the protocol because of duty and obligation. Very, very stable, right? So it would make sense that many of you share this energy with, uh, with the Hierophant card. Others of you are not so much into that. Maybe you guys are a little bit closer to the end of January <laughs> or even uh, earlier in December because that would be fire and air. And fire and air are a little bit more uh, 
non-conventional. They can be conventional, but in a lot of ways they're less predictable than earth energy. And that's not a rule. It's not to say that, oh, if you're born in the end of December, you're an anarchist, or if you're born uh, towards the end of January, you're a free thinker. It's not to say that, but those influence would, influences would be there if you have a little you know, sprinkling of Sagittarius or a sprinkling of uh, Aquarius. It could be. It's not a rule though, okay? Uh, so that's where you start. That song, it just, <laughs> always, anyway. <laughs> um, now where are you going or what's, what else is happening here? Because you have a lot of themes. So again, this might be speaking to several sectors or areas of your life at once. But I feel the base of you is having this turbulent relationship with following the protocol and making sure that things are done to the letter or having that expectation placed on you. And there's, like I said, a dysfunction there. There's a tenseness. Or, what's this? What is this? This is, um, static. <laughs> they said static and then they showed me like a Kangol hat and like a thick gold chain, which in hip hop culture, for those who may not be uh, uh, familiar, in hip hop culture, back in the day, the 80s, if you said static, that means like a, you want static, like you want to fight, you want to have a problem, so static, so a problem, uh, you know, like I said, a, a huge disagreement. Um, mm hmm This. Got you. Wow. Okay. <clears throat> I like that. That's cool. All right. So you're here, right? This is where we said you're starting. This, this, and this is basically what's going on the inside. And we'll talk about that as a theme a little bit later, or we might talk about it now. I don't know what's next yet, but they also are showing me. So this is the internal, right? These three cards, boom, boom, boom. Your external cards are rather what you're projecting what you are showing the world or what's kind of coming out that people can discern that other people around you can tell is this, this, and this. All right. So yeah. Okay. What people can tell, we'll go with it. So one of the first things that people can tell about you Capricorn is the magician in reverse. I'll show you this card upright so you can become used to it. This is the English tarot deck in case you're wondering, but again, it's in reverse. So the magician, he's an alchemist. He's someone who is in the habit of mixing together different parts and different proportions to make a certain outcome, a desired outcome, something that he really, really, really wants. Yeah. Uh, and that's in the upright position. That's, that's at his highest level. That's at the tippy top of like mwah, excellence with the, with the, uh, with the magician in reverse. I feel other people see it differently. You might feel okay and fine with how you're going about life. You're happy with your job. You're happy with your family, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your husband, your wife, whoever. You're happy with your friends. You feel good. Again, these three are kind of what other people are seeing in you. And other people's vision of you or perception of you isn't necessarily the truth. I'm just here to tell you this is what they're, this is what uh, from their from their point of view, right? From their point of view, Capricorn, you're doing it all wrong, basically. You're doing it all wrong. They're critical of you, or they think that you're being foolish. They think you're being reckless. They think that you're being, uh, in some cases, uh, misled or misleading, okay? Because um, when the magician is in reverse, it's not going well. It's Again, this is what other people are thinking. Whether or not that's true about your life, you're, you are the judge. I don't know. But pardon me, pardon me, I'm sorry. Um, but other people are thinking you're doing too much or you're not doing enough of something. Again, we're talking about proportions and mixing them together for like an excellent recipe, like getting to that sweet spot, right? So some people are thinking maybe you work too much, maybe you care too much about something or you're giving too much of your time or your money into something in some cases. Other people are thinking you're not doing enough of those things. And they're very critical of it. Like they're telling you at every chance they can, or they're indicating to you whenever they can, Capricorn, stop that. Capricorn, that's a mistake. Capricorn, are you crazy? Capricorn, don't be stupid. Stuff like that. And 
again, this is not of your concern. Like, I'm telling you, and maybe this is eye-opening to you, but please don't, like, take it and, like, run with it and want to, like, start fights with people. Just understand that this is how people are seeing you. And I think the significance of people seeing you this way, it shows in many cases, honestly, Capricorn, hate. Like, not hate, like they hate you, but hate as in, like, they're hating on you. They're throwing shade on you. They are not appreciative or are they capable of understanding what you're going through they don't know everything that you're going through and that could be it if they're on the outside they don't know everything that you're dealing with so if you're putting too much time money and effort into something they see one they they're seeing like one angle of it from your perspective obviously as the subjective person as as the querent here in the reading you know all sides especially when it concerns you capricorn so this judgment, this critique of other people from the outside, they don't know everything. And that's the bottom line. They don't know everything. So have like, like that, I hope that is something that you can carry with you and, and kind of quell or squash whatever fire or annoyance or hurt you might feel by other people's critique, okay? In other cases, they see you doing this, this not doing it right too much, too little, whatever it is. And they think you're doing that on purpose. Uh, the, 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 the magician in reverse often can be seen as a manipulator, somebody who abuses their power or, or takes advantage of a situation and isn't sh uh, showing gratitude or isn't uh, necessarily uh, giving props when props are due. So some of you might be viewed as greedy, uh, greedy, excuse me, <clears throat> or like I said, manipulative, somebody who is pulling the strings and trying to set things up in their favor. Like you're being really calculated and, and crafty with what you're doing. Uh, so sidestepping, being underhanded, all that kind of stuff. Again, this is their perception. If it's true or not, I don't know. You know there might be a grain of truth to it for some of you, not just this part of the manipulation, but even the other part of of being, uh, making missteps or, or, uh, um, giving too much to a situation that might be true. It's real. take it with a grain of salt, basically. Um, but yeah, that's how they view you. And they're drawing me to this symbol. It's a small symbol here. Can you see, uh, focus please. Ah, it's not going to come out too, there it is. It's not the exact symbol, but it's very similar to the planet or the the glyph for Mercury. And I've ne I don't I've never noticed that on this card before. So they're telling me Mercury. Mercury is the planet of communication. It rules uh, Virgo and Gemini. So those two, uh, you might have someone who is either of those astrological signs who's important to you. But again, it does not have to be. But basically what they're, they're telling me is communication, communication, talk, 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 talk. So someone might view you talk yourself out of situations that can be viewed as manipulation. That can be viewed as, as some type of um, uh, uh, way of sidestepping your problems or sidestepping the conflict or whatever. Uh, but the other aspect is talk, 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 talk. I feel your communication is very key right now, Capricorn. What you say, when you say it, and who you say it to, all those things and more are super important. So you might want to mind your mouth, not like in a, you know, demeaning way. I don't mean, I don't mean that to sound demeaning or condescending, but literally someone might be mo monitoring you, stalking you in terms of talk. So if you are angry with people and you're having heated arguments don't leave an angry voicemail don't send you know texts in all caps basically don't give them the ammo that they can use against you okay as much as they might view you as a manipulator and you as being conniving and sneaky don't give them the chance to do that to you okay and i think i said that about libra's reading like something in their reading was about they might get into a heated exchange with someone and then that person turns it against Libra and kind of tries to ruin their reputation and make it seem like, oh, Libra is the worst thing ever. And he or she said this to me. You know, there is that vein here too with that, with that uh, magician in reverse. It feels as though 
your words can be turned to use against you. Therefore, be careful of what you say, when you say it, who you say it to, all that stuff, okay? Now, what else people are seeing is, yes, got it, girl, guys, this is great. You guys are having such a clear reading. I love it. The death card, card of Scorpio. Many of these are going to involve like other signs. So this guy, okay, there we go. I'm like, why am I having to talk about that? So anyway, card of Scorpio. Oh, quickly before I get into it. <laughs> what I was going to say, but I didn't finish my thought, which often happens, uh, is that I'm having to highlight these different zodiac signs. And I don't have to, but I'm like, why is that important? Or why... Why am I feeling some type of way about it? It's because this situation, your life, your family, your work life, whatever, might have many people involved. So this is a kind of a, 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 a an overview. Obviously, tarot in general is an over, overview, especially a general reading. Uh, but yours specifically, Capricorn, could be talking about a certain period in your life. This could be like the past five years of your life or something that we're talking about. For others, it could be like the past month or so. It depends. Uh, and when that happens, when you have a certain amount of time and we're looking at an overview, we're usually not looking at the specifics between you and another person or you and a smaller group of people. This can be something that impacts a, a lot of people. So, <clears throat> excuse me, the potential that we're talking about something at your work or within your family dynamics or your friendship circles is very likely. Like a an encompassing energy is what's is what's behind this okay and like i said in the beginning all these majors thematic stuff it can apply to different aspects of your life different areas of your life all that good stuff continuing on <laughs> death card card of scorpio again you don't have to know a scorpio personally uh but there could be uh someone in your life who is a scorpio who is important to you but again does not have to be Changing, 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 transformation, transformation, right? Death is the ultimate transformation. We go from being this living sentient being to what? A, a piece of piece of plywood. You know, we don't, uh, you have, you have your theories. I have my theories. That person over there has their theories, whatever. But certainly it's an ultimate change, right? Death is the ultimate change. You cannot come back from death. Uh, in most cases, if not all cases, you know, you have those stories where I was dead and I saw the light and I spoke to God and then I, you know, was brought back to life. You could argue those are kind of not, <laughs> but if you are dead, absolutely dead, 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 there's no way back from it. So ultimate changes, changes that from this moment, from that point onward, nothing will be the same, right? So they're seeing that in you. <clears throat> Excuse me. I am getting over cold, so that's where all this clearing of the throat is coming from. Um, but anyway, so people are seeing that about you. They're seeing that you're changing. You've become someone different, someone they haven't expected. You know, death comes unexpectedly a lot of times, like when you're dead, you know, or rather you can't predict it. You know, they say that when your time's up, your time's up and nobody knows when they're going to go, that kind of thing. So it's something that they haven't, they had no accounting for in you, Capricorn. They are shocked that you are changing into this person or doing things this way or saying these things. It's totally different. Out of their realm of, 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 of possibilities for what you could have done or what you could have said or, or any or, or anything like that. And look at that look at that hand there in the top corner, reaching out for uh, the the central figure there in the illustration. So they could be doing that, like, hey, come back here, don't do that, or hey, where do you think you're going? Or hey, that's weird, don't do that, or are you st you know, they could be reaching out and tapping your shoulder. Some of them could be that could literally happen to some of you. Like maybe you, you know, you change your hair, you get a new hairstyle, you start wearing different clothes, you visually look different, you visually have changed yourself and someone could be reaching out and tapping your shoulder. Oh, hey, Capricorn, I, that's you? Oh my God, I love your hair. Or, oh my God, look at that dress or look at these shoes. Oh wow, look at you. It could be that where they literally are reaching out to touch you and to get your attention because they can't recognize you anymore. So someone is reaching out and pleading with or admiring in some cases, a fewer cases, uh, but most of them are reaching out because they, they have, they feel that they're losing you or that they, mm, They don't want you to go. They don't want you to change. They don't want you to, to grow. Um, others of them, they miss you. Others of them, you know, if we are talking about something a little bit more health-wise or 
you know, on the in the realm of mort mortality, there could be, you know, the reaching out to make amends, to, you know, kind of mend bridges so that we don't, you know, so something in, in terms of mortality doesn't end on a bad note. And you could be doing this to someone else, by the way. In this In this specific case, Capricorn, you could be reaching out to someone who is close to death, to be totally frank. You could be reaching out to someone who is terminally ill and you're trying to make amends after you have changed. You know what I mean? So for a few of you, very few, that could be what's going on um, with the death card here. <laughs> That's a terrible time to laugh, Jay. But the reason I did is because they put a put a stamp on that. They they said that was that that was the message, and then they drew me to something else, and that is why I laughed. This ball here, between the legs of the, of that guy, they said it was a pearl, 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 pearl. And I was like, okay, pearl. And then it's like vir virgin. I was just like, okay, so someone is watching you grow for for some of you possibly younger you don't have to be young to be a virgin you can be an older virgin but someone is blossoming sexually right <laughs> uh and i'm laughing again for something they just put into my head which i will have to explain uh but some of you are are are, are developing in a sexual way possibly venturing out and 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 having sex for the first time or dating for the first time falling in love for the first time marrying for the first time something for the first time right all different types of considerations of what you are a quote-unquote virgin uh from or of right <clears throat> and again there's that hand reaching out so some of you might have parents who are concerned you're like i'm 20 let's say you're a later couldn't considered a late in life virgin you're in your 20s you haven't really dated you've spent you know most of your young adult years focusing on school or work or whatever for whatever reason and you're just now getting out there your parents your friends whoever could be reaching out be careful out there there's a lot of scumbags out there or you know you start dating someone who's new a new pearl you know your 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 relationship is virginal because it's brand new right and people are like is he a good guy? Is he a nice guy? You know, they're concerned. So, and the thing that they're concerned about, not only what we're talking about in The Magician, but what they're also concerned about is once you do this thing, once you commit this act of dating or having sex or doing whatever you're doing, getting married, uh, in whatever cases, committing or breaking a commitment in some cases, because death of a relationship, the death of a marriage, the death of whatever once you do this you can't go back so that is their concerns cautiousness there they they feel the need in some cases to protect you in other cases they feel as though like i was saying here in the magician you're making a mess of your life and you should not do it what was i laughing at before i said i would talk about it and then they shit shit <sighs> i was like there's another thing uh Virgins, right? We're talking about virgin stuff. Uh, I can't remember. So then it wasn't necessary. It was not necessary to be here in this reading. I talked it out of my own head. There you go. <laughs> All right. And the last aspect of how other people are seeing you uh, is this moon card, which is associated with the sign of Pisces. Moon card has been coming out a lot. And I did speak. I can't remember who I spoke to about it. Um, where cycles of the moon are important. So, and again, uh, moons, this is your birth month. So there could be something significant about, you know, you, uh, hitting sort of this, uh, return to yourself. So there could be something significant for some of you on your birthdays is, is, is basically how they want me to tell you that. But the moon in general, uh, is going to speak to, those shady aspects of your life not not shady like how we use shade now to to mean like derogatory something not derogatory but basically say someone is talking shit right but shade is in like you can't see like it's not clear you know fuzzy you know oh dark basically so i think this is how you are coming across to some people not all but to some you're coming across this way they don't understand you uh you're being 
secretive. Moon can talk about secrets and illusions and delusions, things like that. So some of the people are thinking you're basically shadow boxing. You know, you're kind of kind of doing a rope a dope. Like they can't they can't tell where you are. They can't pinpoint you, right? Um, others think you are misleading. You are lying. You are hiding something. You're being secretive about something, and that's within your right to be. Um, but certainly they, a lot of them are not pleased with that. They would prefer there to be no lies, to be no, um, uh, <laughs> shadowy aspects between you and them or in the situation in general. Um, but for, I think this has been, like I said, this is them, whoever they are, a group of people, one specific person, I don't know, but for them, there is this message and you can tell them or you know convey it to them or take it for yourself and kind of find solace in it but there for them on their side of things is this reluctance to accept what they don't know what they don't understand what they're not privy to what they have no access to know if Capricorn wants to keep a secret if Capricorn wants to lie if Capricorn wants to sidestep that's Capricorn's right we cannot control individuals we cannot control other people we cannot say we can ask for the truth we can even demand the truth but will the truth always come to us no there's no control that we have over other people giving information to us or being authentic with us. So if they are struggling with what they view as your inauthenticity, that's their problem. If you are acting truthful, if you're, if you know in your heart of hearts, Capricorn, you've been wholly truthful. You've given nobody reason to, to doubt you, but they still doubt you. That means it's their problem. Okay. So, yeah. Some of them are dreaming about you. You know? Moon card, again, associated with Pisces. And Pisces uh, is ruled by Neptune. Neptune is the planet of dreams, uh, dreamscapes, and the underworld. Basically, the deep subconscious, yeah? <clears throat> so, a lot of them dream about you. Maybe they dream and they fantasize about you, or they literally go to sleep, and while they're snoring away, you're in their head. Um, and the dream is not matching reality... The dream makes them bitter towards the reality, okay? For some of you, this is a person who likes you, who loves you in a romantic way. And you're not available to them. This could be an ex. This could be someone that, you're, that you dated recently, but it never went anywhere. Or it could be someone that you're involved with right now, but there's just like a distance between you or there's a little bit of a discrepancy between you. And in the dream, everything is nice. You're together. You're making, you know, whoopee, as, as they used to say, right? You're just having this wonderful carnal connection or this lovely romantic connection. But the reality is Capricorn is not here. Capricorn is not into this. Capricorn is unavailable emotional, um, emotionally to me, unavailable physically to me. And so there's this ache. There's an ache, right? Where the dream is just a letdown for reality. And again, that's their issue. You can be concerned, you can be sympathetic, but don't let that curtail you is what I'm is what I'm feeling. Again, it's their cross to bear, their burden to carry. Okay? Now, going back into this what's going on inside of you, Capricorn. So we talked a lot about what was going on with the Hierophant. You also have the Hermit card up here card of Virgo. So again, Virgos might be important to you, but they don't have to be yada, yada, yada. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hermit is this deep reflection card, this card that where you can't hide from yourself. You get out a lantern, a torch, a flashlight, a candle, the, the, the cell phone, the flashlight on your phone. I don't care what you're using. And you go down into the basement. You go down into the cellar, the deep, deep pits of yourself, and you pull up whatever shit is down there. Good shit, bad shit, whatever's down there, yeah? The hermit is in the interest of self-awareness, self-reflection, and self-appraisal. What am I doing that's good? What am I doing that's not so good? And being honest about it and owning it. It's a long process. I'm talking fast, even though this video will probably be about an hour or so long. The relative moment in which 
I'm saying this and you watch this video is very short. The hermit actually is a long drawn out process, weeks, months, maybe even years for some of you that you've been working on this or that you will be working on this or that you're currently working. It all depends on where you are in your personal journey. And the hermit often acts alone. So it's, it's a very personal energy, basically a personal journey. You're not most likely Capricorn screaming this from the rooftops, telling everybody, Hey guys, I woke up today and I started crying and I cried for 20 minutes because I had a childhood memory that I didn't know was still affecting me. And I sat and I thought about it and da -da -da. you're not giving people the play by play of what you're working on. You're just working on it very silently, very, very solemnly, very much on your solo game. Okay, this is also like I said, it's the card of Virgo. So another earth energy. So the things I was telling you about the earth signs here in the Hierophant also apply here as far as the stability, uh, the predictability, the levelness, the groundedness, right, which again, you've got your two sister signs here Taurus and Virgo influencing you. So there's a there's something about getting into those deep crevices down in the dirt my friend down in the dirt is what you are doing or need to do and again it's I said what's going on internal so again I'm just telling you what you already know about yourself what you're doing what you need to do nobody else practically no one else knows this you keep you're keeping it under wraps and that's usually very good for uh for the hermit card Virgos are very much solo energies you know no offense to any Virgos who might be cross watching um, but Virgos are very independent, you know, Taurus is very communal. You're communal in a different way, Capricorn. You're very much interested in, in, um, God, I... <laughs> okay, let's, let's put it this way. Like Taurus is interested in the family unit, very much into the familial structure. Virgo is very much into the individual structure and Capricorn, you're very much into the public faction or the public persona who am I or how do I function out in the world so you have some back of house stuff if, if you could you if we could borrow that phrase right you have some back of house stuff that you're dealing with but you're still maintaining your public persona you still have to get up and go to work every day you still have to get up and make your kids lunches every day you still have to go on family holidays together you still have to go uh, and celebrate your birthday because your girls are taking you out for margaritas and tacos you know you still have to do all that stuff but this is going on all the time like a running like a running clock although aren't good. you know what I mean like it's running in the background okay <clears throat> excuse me that's right the browns the tan all that stuff a little bit of that gray so that earthy stuff so some of you might need to get in contact with the earth like literally go outside touch the ground touch a tree hug a tree you know the weather's not that great for it but maybe go outdoors and enjoy some physical activity although I don't necessarily think you need to be active um I just think it's you need to go out, take a deep breath of the air. If you if you if you're not you know, if if you can you know some air is not uh, not great to breathe. But if you're in a place where you can, kind of you know step aside, uh, out in nature, like not in the middle of like a city crosswalk or anything like that, but really intake the natural world, that might help you. Or you might have something critical that centers around earthscapes earthscapes landscapes excuse me earthscapes landscapes you know like I said for some of you you might have some deep wounds involving your childhood or in your memory and maybe you know there was a certain camping trip that was you know kind of traumatic or or somehow life-altering for you uh, and you might need to basically get to that area and let something go bring something up so that you can bury it again do you, you see what I mean you might have to meet your demons in in their in their resting place okay I'm not seeing anything specific other than going out walking a trail visiting an old campsite going to a lake or a river something like that some of you maybe even a grave site you know you might need to mourn someone you know so 
deep homework is going on with you while you're having this upholding the rules and the regulations or you're dismantling the rules and the regulations. Take your pick. You know who you are. On the other side of that, on the far, far side of that, you have the Seven of Wands. So you're standing your ground. All right? Fire sign energy. Uh, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. Not to say like any of them are significant, but I'm just highlighting the fire signs in case you're unaware. <clears throat> but the Seven of Wands is, I'm going to say what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm going to say what I'm saying. I'm going to say what I have to say. And nobody's going to give me any shit about it. Or I'm going to do what I have to do and nobody's going to give me any shit about it. And if they do, I'm going to fight them. I'm going to articulate my point. I'm going to defend myself. I'm not going to be a coward. I'm not going to uh, buckle under pressure. I'm not going to be influenced to let something go or to do anything I'm not prepared to do. It's I am the captain of my own ship, Brenda, James, Al, uh, Arnold, leave me alone. Whoever you're talking to, wh whoever you're having to say, shut the hell up to, okay? I almost said the other word. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so it's staunch. You And you feel strong for the most part, I think. You feel strong. The changes that you're going through, that other people are seeing in you, you're being strong in them. Okay, I'm, tr I'm yeah, I'm transforming. I got my hair dyed. So what? You know? Oh, you're a blonde now. Yeah, I'm a blonde. So what? <laughs> you know? Or yes, I'm a blonde. I've wanted to be a blonde for like the past five years. And so I finally said I'm going to do it. And I did it. So blah, blah, blah. You can shut up. And people might not be critiquing you. So maybe that's what they're pointing out to me. I'm like, why am I talking about this? Some of you might be hyper defensive. Okay. So again, someone here reaching out to touch you is that you Capricorn you know you're in the grocery store or something and somebody is that heck you know that whole thing you might be like like you already the hair on your neck might be standing up and you might already be tense so in that case you might be a little over defensive not everybody who's approaching you and saying hey Capricorn you've changed they're saying it in a negative connotation some people are like Capricorn you've changed I like this some of them will say I like it so be discerning Make sure you don't, you know, bite anybody's head off if they're actually out to compliment you and, and commend you for doing what you're doing and, and looking how you look and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, so, yeah, like, be about your business, girl. Be about your business, guy. Do what you got to do. You know, I feel that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Some of you just needed insight here needed clarity or affirmation in this reading for those who were looking for a more direct message something specific i'm sorry this was not what came out today this is for those who needed like general guidance needed a general bit of of, of clarity in involving several situations in their lives or several areas in their lives um yeah because that's really all there is to say about your main i love it and I think for December or November, I was loving something for you. You guys have been on a good track. You guys are, and I don't, I don't follow astrology, but I think I read something that this is like a year for Capricorn to like make it. Like you guys are on this incredible upswing. I think, I think I saw that a few times, but don't quote me. I'm not an astrologer and I don't have the best, I don't have the best memory these days. <laughs> Your outcome for January is the Ace of Swords. So. Like I said, I just said that and I wasn't looking at the board, uh, you know, maybe one day I'll get a camera that can compensate and like put me in frame, but whatever. I don't really look at the board when I'm talking. I'm usually looking up or away, like out the window or up in a corner over there. Um, so yes, clarity, especially for some of you, vocal clarity, very important. So some of you, maybe you've had, like I'm having like this little scratchy throat thing. I was sick. Uh, so maybe some of you caught a cold over the new year i think there was like a stomach thing going around where i live so maybe some of you were under the weather and now you're getting back to being able to communicate who you are and what you are and what you think quite clearly others of you you're taking sort of the stopper out of the drain and you're letting it all go and so when people ask your opinion instead of like giving the cliched you know uh <laughs> nice answer you're gonna give them the truth you know, clarity, or excuse me, Ace of Swords is about truth and sort of having this no holds barred approach to the truth 
having ownership of your truth, having ownership of your own ideas, and you're just not afraid to let it fly. It's beautiful. Very self-determined uh, energy. Um, <clears throat> and they want me to talk about the aspect of the aces, the aces, or the ones, the first cards. These are usually opportunities, chances, the potentials, right? So some of you might quiver a little bit, or you might be a little unsure, you might be a little uh, apprehensive of doing this, so that would just be the potential. You have the potential to speak your truth and be honest and be and unflinching with your honesty if you want to, but that comes at the risk of having to defend yourself. It also comes to the risk of having people, you know, push back against you, having these disagreements, you know. So some of you might be a little cautious or, or weary of doing that, uh, but the potential is there. The other aspect is, like I was saying here with the death card, from this moment on, maybe from this day or some day previous to whenever you're watching this, there is this no turning back energy. That is linked here. When I was talking about the death card, that is also linked here. There's no turning back from. From this day forward, I will always do this. I will always be this. I will always say that. Something like that. And it could be... I don't know why they're giving me this because this is like the first like true specific that I feel they're giving me is I think for some of you it could be involving social justice or some type of cause or some type of uh, social or political uh, concern of yours, whatever side of the argument or the issue you fall on, you could then take up swords, take up arms in defense of this particular cause or issue that you uh, find to be important to you. So some of you might be taking that on and that's new. From this day forward, I am going to volunteer X amount of hours a month for this cause or I'm going to make sure that I sign all kinds of petitions or in terms of communication. Now, maybe you're starting an Instagram or Facebook or some type of uh, a page on social media, right? And you are dedicating that bit of your life or that bit of your interest in you're funneling it into that, that social media page or that social media presence. Okay. Overall energy, <clears throat> excuse me, for the month is the tower card. So boom, 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 boom. <laughs> Why am I saying that? Because the tower's coming down, my friends. The tower's coming down. And it's a good thing. Most of you realize it's a good thing. A few of you are like shaking in your boots and I gotta let you know it's not. Even though it might feel very disruptive, it might feel as though things are out of control or, or, or things are scary, don't take it that way. Or rather, don't sit in that energy too long because the tower is about changes that we need, changes that are necessary, changes that facilitate great growth and freedom. If you were in a, a situation that held you back, a situation that was founded in shit, basically, founded in lies in some cases, or founded in mistruths, or founded in false expectations or rules that didn't, that no longer sit with you, and you let a situation go, a job, a relationship, a friendship, whatever, let it go. Most of you are okay with it, but there's a few of you who are being stubborn, and you're saying, no, that was what I needed. No, it wasn't. I'm telling you, it wasn't. Let it go. <laughs> okay. Um, and the tower can be scary because that can involve, you know, losses of a, a certain type, financial losses, losses uh, in terms of relationships, in terms of closeness with certain individuals. Like I said, some people are reaching out to you and they miss you. It's like, no, let them keep reaching. Don't, don't reach back. Don't look back. Okay. So yeah, it feels like you know, for some, and also the, um, the other aspect is it can come suddenly, you know, uh, so that might be disheartening or, or jarring for some of you. And that's understandable, totally understandable. If something comes quick and you don't expect it, you don't plan for it, my God, can that be like stressful and, and anxiety ridden? Okay. That can give you high points of anxiety and panic, but for the best in the long run, it is for the best in the long run. Okay. Capricorn, we did this. Guys, girls, whoever's watching, I feel so good about this. I feel like I felt the same way for you guys in December. I don't know. I don't watch my videos back. But damn, you guys got a good reading. In terms of, I don't feel you are very disabled. I feel you're very much, a, you know what you're doing. Keep doing it. It might have little hiccups here and there. There might be problems and, and, and hate coming from shade and all that coming from people who don't understand you or understand the, 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 the full scope of the situation. Let them be. Let them be. Let them say what they have to say. 
Okay? You're fine. You're fine. All right, guys. That <laughs> that's the reading for January. I loved it. Did you love it? If so, you could reflect that with a like button uh, down below. You could also show that by sharing your video or sharing my video across your social media pages, your Facebooks, your Twitters, all that good stuff. I would love it. Um, you can also leave comments because I love to read how and when uh, the readings resonate with people. It really gives me validation and affirmation that I'm on a good journey and I'm continuing to grow as a reader. Uh, the other thing that you can do is, of course, subscribe. You know, YouTube loves subscriptions. They're like little pebbles of food to them. And, <laughs> and so I would love to feed the machine that is YouTube. So if you want to help me feed the machine that is YouTube, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. But if you don't want to, I totally understand. It's totally okay. I accept it no matter what. And so, yeah, I want to thank you guys so, so much for watching up until this point. Take care. Oh, wait, no. I, I'm giving you my goodbye without telling you what's happening next. I'll be back soon. <laughs> with the February reading. Uh, I also been thinking of uh, I'm batting around this idea of new content and what I can make. So I might bring some new content uh, soon, if not soon, like by springtime. So anyway, look for me in a few weeks time for your February readings. Okay. I thank you guys so, so much for watching. Take care. Bye.